Hi guys, I'm back. It's been a while. Uh, sorry about that. It's been like a year. I mean, I've been posting here and there on little things like shorts and shit, but um, and I post on social media and stuff. But it's been quite a while. It's been, it's been like a year. So there are no updates at all. I'm kidding. There's updates. Come on inside. Okay, remember this guy, right? Yeah, I still got it. Still got it. Um, yeah, the last video I think I put was about... I'm trying to think. I had some shorts on there. One was like, get in, loser. Uh, it was just cruising and beatings, whatever. Before that, I was working on the fans. Anyway, the transmission was fucked up. And the clutch. The clutch was slipping and the transmission was... Uh, it would grind fourth, just driving normal, like shifting from third to fourth. It would grind. And that's mostly my fault, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I mean, my brother has the transmission now. He's gonna take it apart and see what's wrong with it. So we'll find out. But um, I was messing around with the no lift shift in which I, I put a, a button on the clutch pedal to uh, basically pull a bunch of timing out when you hit the clutch pedal so you can ram the gears home, you know, basically flat shift, no lift shift or what have you. And, and in the process of tweaking that, you know, getting the timing right and, and the, you know, different RPM ranges and stuff like that. Um, I missed gears a couple times and, and it started, you know, it started making the, the grinding noise. If I shift slow, it would be okay. And so what I did was I bought another transmission and the thinking there was I'll have a spare. And also I didn't like the gearing on this transmission. This transmission was the uh, the wide ratio so I had a 295 297 first gear which is great you know for launching and stuff but then it was weird like first second and third were kind of small and close together but then it was a big drop from third to fourth like it was a 1.46 third gear down to a 1.0 fourth gear and this new one it has a bigger first gear but that third to fourth drop is going to be much better it goes from 130 to a 10 and also, because that third gear is bigger, it might, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to get 130. I'm going to be able to do a 60 to 130 uh, and hit 130 in third before I had to shift fourth. So, I, like, third was too big to start in, so I would go start second, hit third, and then shift fourth. Shifting twice is just not good for a 60 to 130. So this will just be one shift, hopefully, from now on. Uh, but the first gear is a 260, so that takes a little bit getting used to, like driving around slow, like when you're in a parking lot or something, or pulling out, or because I have a 340 gear in the back, and that's it's kind of big. But um, yeah, let me take you around here. All right, we're just uh, in the garage still, but the uh, this was the box from the transmission. I don't have. I took some pictures. It's in the car. I mean, maybe I'll put some pictures here, you know, and so you can see the new clutch and the new trans and stuff. I'll insert them here. But yeah, the new clutch is in. The new trans is in. Here's the old one. Uh, this is a McLeod RXT. Uh, just a regular RXT. And this this little, that's the uh, adapter plate for small block Chevy. It's, it's really dumb. I know this is an LS motor. But, um... I, I did some stupid shit, not stupid, but at the time it, it made sense, and I'm kind of stuck running a small block Chevy clutch unless I change, like, everything. And it's a long story, but basically, I used to run a, a Trimic TKO transmission, 5-speed, and I would have that, I had that behind a 383 small block with a turbo, and fast forward, I built this, and to run my existing transmission, all I needed was an adapter plate. And then, uh, an, I'm sorry, an adapter flywheel. So I bought the adapter flywheel and then I was able to run my existing clutch, bell housing, yada yada. Fast forward, I put the six speed in. Oh, all we need now to put the six speed in is an adapter plate to go from the four bolt, you know, pattern on a, a typical, you know, old school transmission like the TKO or a Muncie or whatever. To the six or eight bolt or whatever how many bolts the ls motor has so i put an adapter plate on it and now i got rid of that because it was a bell housing with an adapter and then it pushed the transmission away and it, anyway now i got a new bell housing for it 
which is the correct one, meaning I don't need a spacer, but it's still small block Chevy shit. So I got LS motor to small block Chevy clutch, L uh, to small block Chevy bell housing, and now if I change it all to LS, it's gonna move the transmission, it's gonna move the cross member, it's gonna move the shifter, it's gonna just the the drive shaft's gonna be too short. It's just it's like a clusterfuck, and it's thousands of dollars to change all that. I mean, a, an LS clutch itself, if I get like a triple disc, is like twenty three hundred or twenty five hundred, whatever the fuck they cost. The bell housing is another eight hundred. Shorten the drive shaft or get a new drive shaft, another eight hundred. Like, so whatever. I learned the hard way that I should have done shit the first time around. But anyway, so the trans is in, clutch is in. This uh, new clutch is an RXT uh, 1200, which is identical to this. Same discs, but it has a, a different pressure plate. So it kind of got a little stiffer on the pedal, it feels like. Um, it's it's definitely livable, though, but it's rated for 1,200 foot-pounds of torque or horsepower or however they rate them. But there's nothing wrong with this clutch at all. It just couldn't handle the power I was throwing at it. And uh, from what I hear, McLeod will rebuild these like if you send it back you know for i don't know what the price is but you can have them rebuilt and resurfaced and it'll be fine um it's the, it's the same clutch disc as rxt 1200 the only thing that's different with this is the uh i have a different pressure plate now so that's that but i do have one more thing i want to show you guys all right i have one more thing i want to show you guys and if you follow me on social media you know about it already I've you know, I've posted about it and stuff, but, um, yeah, without any further ado, here it is. Here it is. This is my guy. All right, let me flip you around. Hold on. All right, this is my, uh, my new unit, my new guy. Um, this is a 2020 Camaro ZL1. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with these, they're, um, the sixth generation Camaro. And this is the top model um, they do have the ZL1 1LE which is the track version it's like the track package it has a bigger wing and some uh, down dive planes in the front different suspension different wheels but uh, horsepower and stuff wise they're the same this is the uh, gen 5 LT5 LT4 motor sorry LT5 is the is the ZR1 motor that was one nine, 2019 one year only hold on let me pop the hood for you all right, yeah, here it is. It's the, uh, you know, supercharged LT4. They're, um, they're rated at 650 horsepower, 650 torque, and these things run great, dude. It's, the cars are kind of heavy. I think they're like 3,800 pounds, um, but I have a manual six-speed, but the 10-speed cars, if you put a tire on it and, like, a glory pass, Hail Mary in the cold, and it hooks and goes, you can, you can get into the 10s with these cars, bone stock. And so, yeah, they're, they they run great. Um, so the inside, um, yeah, the car's mostly stock. It does have uh, somebody put MBRP exhaust on it. I don't know if you can see, but it says MBRP right there on the tailpipes. It sounds great. It's a little loud um, because if you look if you look online at, at what this is, it's basically a straight through pipe with like a chamber off to the side. So like when it's idling, it's somewhat quiet. And then anytime you give it some throttle, it, it does get loud. Um, yeah, so it's got the MBRP uh, axle back exhaust and also someone eliminated the secondary cats. These cars have four cats on them. And basically the second set of cats is because California's stupid and they want extra emissions on their shit. So it still passes emissions, it passes inspection and everything's fine with that um but also what else i did this I, I bought this little uh shift knob for it um i like how it looks but I, this kind of bugs me like these ridges are annoying like when your finger rubs on it um but this is actually a custom knob i forget <sighs> bulldog shift knobs or something like that i forget but they had one just like this but it was black and so I messaged them, and I'm like, hey, I really like that ZL1 shift knob, but is there any way to get it in white? And he's like, yeah, we can do a custom order and make you one, and you know, so I waited like four weeks for that, but I got it. But I do have a solution maybe to get rid of this, and uh, I just don't like these ridges, like it's weird. I don't know, they want you to put this up to that and then use that, 
like they give you an o-ring or you can use a zip tie but then it's too close i don't like the fabric being up against the bottom of the ball if that makes any sense i don't know but um yeah the car is amazing it's fun to drive i love it uh i already put like four thousand miles on it um it is coming up on a year that i've had it already i got it last uh, october november something like that and I got it for a decent price. Uh, the sticker on it on the lot was 67 67.9. I got them down to 63.9, but after tax, tax, yada, yada, I still ended up paying 67 for it. Um, which is that's what they go for. It's not bad. I have a buddy of mine who went down to Florida and bought his uh, almost brand new, I think it had like 7,000 miles on it, and he paid uh, 70. 72 for it brand new out the door they're like 82 84 85 something like that but um i did see a couple other ones uh the first one i saw was this 2017 that was red and it was a nice car it was in new york but it was a 17 i started reading up on the 17s they have oil pump issues like it's a you know one of those things that you should repair as soon as possible and then also they have different tail lights they're slightly different in the 17 and 18 models and then uh yeah 17 17 and 18 and then uh, i did find another one too that was also red and this the red this one in, it was in connecticut and it was uh it was a 1le so it had the big wing and the the dive planes and the 19 inch wheels these are 20s uh they have different wheels and uh they're uh it's like a seven thousand dollar package added you know the one le package but that one was a 10 speed auto i think he wanted 64 but it had thirty five thousand miles on it and then after tax tags yeah you know it, so but this one popped up local like right down the street and when i stopped in to look at it i'm like oh shit it's white my buddy told me that there was one local so i'm like I have, uh, for those of you who have known me for a while, I used to have a white Iroxy, and it just, like, it spoke to me. The white is amazing. Like, it reminded me of my white Iroxy. Uh, but yeah, I love it. I've just been driving the piss out of it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it runs pretty good. I'll put a video here of a 60 to 130. Yeah, it runs pretty good like um you know 755 is nothing no it's no slouch I, you know i posted it up online to see uh you know every once in a while you get one that's you know uh an oddball like a, a weirdo fast one and uh you know a lot of guys are saying their stock cars are in the eights i had a buddy who who had a he had a lid he did a lid he did an intake uh, the same exhaust I have, and it was a 10-speed auto car, and he went 7.4. So this thing, it's pretty damn good for what it is. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I'm going to start it here for you in a minute. Uh, it's not going to be a cold start, but it does. it is pretty loud when you first start it. Like, I've, I've warned people. Like, if I'm at a gas station and there's, like, little kids or something, you know, I'm like, hey, this thing's kind of loud when I first fire it up. Like, it just, when you first start it, 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 it roars. And if I can, it'll scare you if you're not ready.
See, yeah, it sounds pretty good. I just, uh, it is kind of loud. I mean, if I put headers on it or something, it's going to be dumb loud. Like, oh my God. So I don't know. Like, I don't know how far I'm going to go with this car. I think, um, I definitely want to put flex fuel on it. But that might be my first mod. But they say they pick up a ton with flex, I think. They pick up like 80 with just a flex and a tune. And then, um, you know, from then on, you do headers and pulley and this, that, and the other thing. You can you can make like 950 to the wheels with the stock blower. Um, the issue with these is you run into fuel system problems. Um, you need the low side fuel system, high side. These, these cars are direct injected, so they use um, a lobe on the camshaft that actuates a high pressure pump. So you need fuel pumps in the tank to get the fuel to the engine. So you gotta upgrade that usually. And then it and then it bumps the pressure up to like 2,500 pounds. It's crazy. These direct injected engines have crazy high fuel pressure um, on the high side. And then I think they offer like 30% more injectors you could do. Um, but after like, you know, if you wanna make like a thousand with these, you need port injection. And that's where it gets funky and expensive. And basically you have these adapter plates that go under the blower and um, you add eight injectors into the ports so it's supplementing and so you got direct injection and port injection the problem with that is i think there's a new solution coming soon but it's kind of complicated to i think they're using aftermarket ecus to control the secondary injectors um it just it gets dumb expensive fast and i think there's um a new method coming out to where the factory computer can somehow control the auxiliary injectors um but yeah i I don't know, well, you know, I don't know how crazy I want to get. I know a cam in these is ridiculous. It's hard to do. You got to do, um, you got to pull the heads off. You got to uh, drop the little pan. You know, if you take it to a shop somewhere, it's, it's a five thousand dollar job to do a cam on these cars. It's not like an LS where you kind of you spin the cam and the lifters stay up, and you know, it's it's fairly straightforward and easy. But uh, I, honestly, I just don't know if I want to go that far with it. We'll see. If I thought I thought about Maybe in the future doing like a twin turbo kit, and um, but the, you know the issue is you can make a shit ton of power. Guys will with the stock blower like 950, and then they'll go like 2650. You can make like I don't know. I think there's guys even making like 1400 with the you know the 2650 blower, and this is you know an all-out built stroker motor heads, you know, and it just gets dumb expensive quick. Um, I know the Hellion makes a kit for these the turbo kits, not. And um, they're like 10 grand. Um, but again, the fuel system is a limiting factor on these. So, I, like I said, I just, I want to drive it. Um, it's not slow. It feels great. It's got heated and cooled seats. I've never had a car. I've never had like a new car. I've never been driving down the road and your butt's just getting cooled by the, the seat. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's got like a performance data recorder. I think uh, I may have posted something about that. Um, it's pretty neat. It's got a built-in camera um, You know behind the uh, Let me flip it around It's hard to see but it's right behind There it is. Oh, it's hard to see. It's right by the uh, right behind the uh, The rear view mirror there's a camera there and then it's a performance data recorder like it's pretty freaking neat like, It records and it'll show you like 0 to 60 See if I can turn this on. See if I can go to the uh, menu quick here for you. Um, huh? It's in the settings? I don't know. Settings. Here we go. Boom! Oh, back. Settings. Huh? I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway. Uh, hold on, let me, let me see if I can find it, I'll come back. Okay, I'm retarded, all I had to do was hit the home button. Anyway, here, oh, come on, vehicle, huh, apps, oh my god, where the hell is it? Oh wait, it's over here, PDR, performance data recorder, there we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's, uh, you basically hit start recording, and then, um, 
it's pretty neat you can set it up so like if, you, if you're doing a road course you set the finish line and you know and um it, it remembers that uh where's my recorded sessions here we go like here's an old there's a couple i did just to try it out um which one was it this one no not that one uh i think i was just driving around on that one this one yeah Uh, no, one of these I did a... Oh. Is it this one? Uh, this one. So it shows you 0 to 60, 0 to 100, quarter mile. Yeah, that was just, just me trying it out, but it throws you, shows you throttle, RPM, speed, you know, it's pretty neat. Yeah, it's pretty neat. But yeah, this thing's pretty cool. It's got all kinds of other shit, like... I'll, I'll get into it on the channel at some point, but it's got like launch control, different modes. Uh, there's like a secret launch control mode, traction control mode that you can turn on and off. It's pretty neat. Um, but yeah, love this thing. So yeah, this thing, um, yeah, it kicked my ass doing that clutch and trans. Oh my God, rolling around on the floor. I definitely want to put a lift in here. Um, yeah, the turbo tent, it's great. I do have... Uh, plans for this too so we'll uh i'll keep you updated on that too um but yeah rolling around on the ground just kicked my ass like i did everything and it took me two days i mean the first day was get it out and then sent the uh the flywheel out to get machined and and then i kind of just took my time putting it back together and everything went great until like the last you know the hardest part was trying to get the uh splines lined up you know, I had the transmission ready to go in and then I'm just trying to get it to go home um, you know I, I borrowed an input shaft from my brother the clutch this were totally lined up input shaft slides in and out but then I just couldn't get the transmission to just you know slide in and go home with the input shaft and the bearing and everything so my brother came he helped me out and we fucking manhandled that bitch and got it in there but uh, I definitely if I can, I want to put a lift in here, like rolling around on the ground. Like I'm not that old, but I'm I'm in my 40s. I'm 43 already. Like, dude, I felt that shit for the next three days. Like, it kicked my ass. So what I want to do with this is uh, make sure everything's nice and broken in the clutch and everything, and uh, I want to put the other wheels back on and. Uh, yeah, take it, take it for, I might need some new tires, these are just about shot, man. The problem is these things are so fucking expensive, they're like 400 bucks a piece now. Um, I'm gonna clean up those wheels, put those wheels on, and see if we can't get a good, uh, 60 to 130 out of this thing. Um, I'll put a video here, but it, it has gone like 470s spinning, and that was with these tires. So I never got a good, a good pass, um, with the, uh, you know the 275 60 mickey pros i never never got a good run with them um yeah the my my personal best 60 to 130 blew the tires off in second it was with these tires um yeah it was uh blew the tires off in second hit third shifted fourth and just shifting regular like i never got the uh no lift shift working properly as i fucked up the transmission and oh another thing about the transmission this was my I knew this was a problem for a while. This was my speedometer cable, right? And uh, I knew that it was leaking down on the transmission side, like right here, because there's a funky adapter and it, it would just, it would leak fluid. So, but then this part was the part, like this, this bend here went underneath the, uh, the brake master cylinder, the brake booster under here. And it was basically just getting torched, torched, melted to shit by the, by the header. And so I didn't see that until, you know, I went to change it and I saw how it was literally cooked into, like it, it broke, you know, removing it, it broke, but it was just hollow like this. And this cable has fluid in it. So I was losing fluid through that, um, as well. And I'm sure that wasn't 
you know, the transmission didn't like that either, but, um, yeah, my brother has the old trans now, he'll probably, uh, I told him I'm not in a hurry, so maybe once the winter comes, he'll, uh, tear it apart and see what the damage is on that. symptoms it's making is you know it's uh it whines slightly not even that bad you couldn't hear it with the exhaust open you couldn't hear the whine but it would it would whine first second third and then it would grind shifting from third to fourth so we're thinking either the input shaft is cooked synchros you know whatever we'll see what else what else happened to it too i mean i'm not mad at it it was in there five years taking a beating you know, 1,000 horsepower car for five years. I mean, it's not like I take it racing every weekend, but I beat on it and it, it, survi it survived, you know, so, but, yeah. All right. We are going for a little cruise. Now, I'm not gonna beat on it too much, because, like I said, the clutch gotta, the clutch gotta break in you, you know. I mean, it's hard. It's hard not to, but. <laughs> They say, like, they don't even give you miles, they say 1,200 clutch cycles. So that's been driving around, you know, I think I burned half a tank so far. But yeah, here's where I mean, like, the first gear is big, so I don't, you know. Right now it's idling a little high because it's, it's cold still. Like I get E85, it's 
literally three minutes down the street. I used to have to drive like 15, 20 minutes. And uh, they freaking built a brand new sheets right down the street from my house. So E85 is, you know, it's not an issue. You can get it anywhere now. I mean, anytime now. Um, I noticed the uh, the content starting to come down this time of year. They you know, switch over to the winter blend or whatever, but it's still... Uh, 73% I think I got in here still, so not bad at all. Spray the vents. Got it. I ended up spraying the vents. Okay, now she's all nice and shiny. There's some shit on the wheels that won't come off. I got that. That's like sticky. It's this stupid wheel wet shit. Have to scrub that with some wheel cleaner. Other than that, it cleans up all right. This is how you polish a turd. Literally, turd gent. What a machine. What a machine. Alright, I'm gonna take this thing for a cruise, put some miles on it. Um, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, I appreciate you guys. I know it's been a while. I'm gonna try and see if I can uh, keep, keep updates more frequent than uh, once a year or whatever the hell was the last one. But uh, yeah, we got some uh, stuff planned for this thing, stuff planned for the ZL1. And uh, see you soon. Thanks.